What's going on guys? As part of our fundamental series, I felt it was important to dedicate an episode to the macros, carbs, proteins, and fats. We're gonna discuss what I consider to be optimal sources of each of them, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to put it all together into a diet, okay, based on your body weight, how to come up with how many grams of protein, carbs, fats you should be consuming, and then therefore the overall number of calories. This is a topic that there's so much information out there on, still people end up confused. And they say, well, I don't know how much I should be eating. I don't know what I should eat. Hopefully this will help to clarify some of that for you. We're gonna start with carbohydrates. Most of you are aware that carbohydrates are a, depending on what you're doing activity-wise, generally carbohydrates are a preferred energy source for your body, a preferred fuel for your brain. That being said, the body does switch between carbohydrates and fats as an energy source throughout the day, depending on your activity, what you're doing. Body could even resort to burning protein if the situation calls for it. Carbohydrates are, in my opinion, useful for a couple things. First of all, they're calories, okay? They taste good, they're palatable, and generally speaking, they're cheap. Let me just say, I've dieted uh, several times on very, very low carbohydrate diets, ketogenic diets, and uh, I have to tell you, it rearranged my thinking in terms of how necessary carbohydrates are for optimal functioning. Because at times where I was taking in, uh, the only carbohydrates I was consuming was coming mainly from green vegetables, I felt great. Um, so I really had no grains in my diet, no pasta, no bread, no rice. Uh, people would say, well, you must have had no energy. Uh, no, absolutely not true. Uh, considering that as a bodybuilder, throughout most of the day, I'm either sedentary or I'm training. It's not like I'm a long distance runner. Most of the carbohydrates that you see bodybuilders consume are usually grains or vegetables that are starches. That's for a reason. Um, so we're talking rice, oats, pasta, quinoa, bread and bagels, uh, potatoes, uh, squashes, they're all high starch carbohydrates. And the starches, basically what it means is they, they break down very easily and they are easily stored as muscle glycogen, as opposed to fruits and a lot of fructose containing products like maple syrup and honey, uh, which doesn't mean that they're bad or they shouldn't be included in your diet, but this is just a, a commentary as to how much of each should be included. Now, when it comes to the grains, let me point out that in my opinion, rice, potato, and oats are really the bodybuilder's best options for uh, carbohydrates because they're gluten-free. Now, you may not be gluten intolerant. I'm not gluten intolerant either. But if you were to consume large amounts of gluten-containing carbohydrates like pasta and breads, and you made those the basis of your carbohydrates each day, chances are you would feel not as good. <laughs> you would be more bloated. Um, your appetite would decrease. Things would just slow down. And, and I'm not saying this is, this is a definite, but more than likely, if you stick to rice, potatoes, and oats, you're going to feel the best. You're going to perform the best. In my opinion, I would make these carbohydrates, rice, potatoes, and oats, the basis of your carbohydrate intake. And I would aim for about 70%. Now, the remaining 30% could come from bagels or pasta, gluten-containing sources. They're not bad. They just don't digest as well as some of the other ones. But, you know, I'm off season right now. I have a couple bagels every morning. I love them. Uh, and it's an opportunity to change things up. And uh, they do help you to put weight on. When it comes to fruits, here I have an apple and a banana. And I have a grapefruit and a papaya. In my opinion, the grapefruit and the papaya, because they're overall, they're lower in sugar and lower in fructose, are better options for bodybuilders. Now, fructose is something that as a bodybuilder, and this is just my opinion, it's not something you want to overconsume because it does not store as muscle glycogen as well as the starches do. So if you're gonna consume fruit, consume it prior to exercise. Fructose is, you, the deal with fructose is you're likely to either just use it 
as energy or you're gonna store it. That being said, it's not, it's not the ideal carbohydrate source for bodybuilders or even for someone who's, say, for example, a long distance runner. People who run marathons, there's reasons that when they, why when they carb load, they don't carb load on fruit. They carb load on pasta and grains and bagels and potatoes and things like that because it stores well as muscle glycogen and that's what you want. You want stored carbohydrates in your muscles, making your muscles full and there when you need them for performance. Moving on, vegetables. Vegetables are technically carbohydrates. Now, I don't count them as carbohydrates, but I need to mention them because I feel that they're absolutely essential. You should be consuming vegetables with every meal, every whole food meal, especially leafy greens. Kale is really the number one. And uh, you know, I know the yuppies love it, but for good reason. It's incredibly micronutrient dense. It's very good for you, helps to cleanse your blood, helps to counteract any negative effects of overconsumption of animal proteins. Please, you will feel, believe me when I tell you, you will feel better and you will look better when you are consuming large amounts of green vegetables in conjunction with your protein at each meal. Potatoes and squash are technically vegetables rather than grains, and they tend to be a little bit more easy on the digestive system, easier to digest, but again, great starch sources. Uh, sweet potato versus white potato, does it matter? I don't believe so. I would go with whichever one digests best for you. How much carbohydrates overall should you be consuming? I think a gram and a half per pound of body weight. So if you're a 250 pound man or woman, aim for three, say 375 grams of carbohydrates per day. Let's move on to protein. Now, nothing gets as much attention as protein. We're told, you know, via the magazines and everything else, how vital protein intake is. And truth be told, that's correct. When we're constantly tearing down our muscles with uh, hard training, we need amino acids from protein to help rebuild. Common sources for protein, I'm sure you're all familiar with chicken. <laughs> every bodybuilder usually eats a lot of chicken and for good reason, it's usually it's very cost effective, it's easily digested. Uh, and it, it taste is decent and it's very easy to uh, impart flavors upon. So it's, it's, it's very versatile. Fish, generally a little bit more expensive. Fish is incredibly easy to digest. So if you're someone who has digestive issues and you have trouble tolerating large quantities of protein, fish may be a good way for you to go. I like to include fish, whether I'm in the off season or I'm dieting, you know, whether it's a fattier fish like salmon or something light and low fat like cod, they're both great. Dairy, you know, here's some cottage cheese loaded with protein fairly cost effective. Although it's something that I don't consume regularly, I, I feel better without dairy in my diet. I have to acknowledge it because it's, it is a great growth food. When I was coming up and I was uh, looking to put on muscle, I ate a lot of cottage cheese. I drank a lot of milk. So for a lot of young guys out there watching or, or anybody really, if you tolerate dairy well, I say go for it, consume it. Don't be afraid of full fat dairy. I don't think there's any reason to, to go low fat. Get the fat and everything. Um, fat helps you grow as well. Shellfish, you know, it's everyone tends to think in terms of fin fish, but shellfish are also a great protein source. Very high in minerals, very nutrient dense overall. Of course, red meat, everybody hails red meat as the king. To some degree, that's for good reason. It's very nutrient dense, very calorie dense. There's uh, a lot of nutrients in red meat, and uh, depending on what cut or, uh, you know, if you're getting ground meat or a fattier cut of steak, there could be a considerable amount of fat. For someone who's trying to put on size and strength, that fat can be very beneficial. Uh, don't shy away from that saturated fat. You'll notice that if you consume steak regularly, you know, and maybe even eat some of the fat that's on it, you'll be much more powerful. For example, I'm in an off season right now. I consume steak probably four to five times a week and I eat the fat on it and everything. And I'm much more powerful and uh, fuller and everything in the gym when, when, I, when I do that. Before we move on, let me just say that protein what I think is a solid recommendation is a gram and a half of protein per pound of body weight. So again, if you're a 250 pound man, that would mean consuming 375 grams of protein per day. That's a one-to-one -one ratio of carbs. A lot of people say, well, don't you need more carbohydrates than protein? You may, but not everybody does. Uh, for example, I eat about a one-to-one -one ratio and that feels good for me. If I go more carbohydrates, uh, I not only don't feel well, but I just get fat. And it also depends on how much fat you're consuming. Let's address fat. Fat is something that for most bodybuilders is it's underappreciated, it's underconsumed. I can't emphasize enough how important it is. Uh, this is coming from someone who 
has dieted several times using a ketogenic diet, so I know how important fat is because I didn't, I, I felt fine eliminating carbohydrates from my diet, but when I began eliminating fat from my diet, I felt terrible. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it supports the, the, the old saying, you know, say that the people would say, well, there's essential amino acids and there's essential fatty acids, but there's no such thing as an essential carbohydrate. And that is true. So really, in my opinion, protein and fat are the two most important macronutrients. Uh, I know most people don't see it that way. Most bodybuilders are saying, you know, protein, carbs, protein, carbs. And in reality, I think they're all important. And I think that balance is the key thing here. Uh, when it comes to fats, olive oil is an excellent fat source. It's very easily digested. Uh, olives are not a nut. So any, for anyone who has any type of nut sensitivity or allergy, olive oil works very well. It, it burns very easy. Avocados are a good fat source. They're also high in potassium and fiber and they, they taste very good. So it's a nice accompaniment to a meal. Nuts and seeds, there's some al uh, almonds and cashews, two of my favorites. Great thing to add to a meal. Very good fats, predominantly monounsaturated fat, which is a preferred form as opposed to say polyunsaturated fats, which, you know, it, it's questionable whether they may have a negative effect on the thyroid. Um, Generally, as for a bodybuilder, monounsaturated fats and even some amount of saturated fats are best for growth. I've, I've included butter here, which even, again, even though I don't in, uh, include dairy in my diet, uh, butter, I think, is, is, a via, is a very viable fat source. And I don't believe that it's unhealthy, uh, despite having had that drilled into our minds. What's my recommendation for fat intake? If you're consuming a gram and a half of uh, protein and a gram and a half of carbs per pound of body weight. A uh, gram and a half of, of protein times a body weight of 250 would give you 375 grams. I believe times four calories per gram, I believe that would give you 1500 calories per day. Actually, let me get my calculator. All right, so you're a 250 pound man and you're gonna multiply that by one and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight that gives you 375 grams of protein times four calories per gram means you'd be consuming 1500 calories per day from protein and because we did the same amount for carbohydrates you'd also be consuming 1500 uh, calories per day from carbohydrates so what about fat personally my recommendation to begin i'd say consume the same amount of calories from fat as well but keep in mind that fat has nine grams per uh, nine calories per gram. So 1,500 calories divided by nine, gra uh, nine calories per gram gives you 166 grams of fat. So 350 grams of carbs, 350 grams of protein, 166 grams of fat for a 250 pound man. So if you were taking in one and a half grams of carbs per pound and one and a half grams of uh, protein per pound, that you would also be taking in 0.66 grams of fat per pound. Uh, and that would give you an equal amount of calories from each macronutrient. And I think that's a great place to start. I don't think you're ever going to need more protein than that. If you decide you needed more carbs or less fat, you could go up and down with either one of them. Maybe you need more of both, maybe you need less of both. But I think that's a great place to start. And honestly, looking at these food sources here, you could really make your diet out, out, of, out of this here. There's really nothing else that you would need. Maybe uh, I, would, I would recommend a couple more varieties of vegetables, some greens. But otherwise, there's nothing outside of this that you would need to compose your diet of. So I hope that this helps to simplify things a little bit. I hope you found this useful. Subscribe. If you don't, I'll find you. I'll fuck you up. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But subscribe because there'll be more videos like this that I think you will find useful. And until next time, see you later.